In this video, we're going to look at Unit 2, Lesson 2, Congruent Parts, Part 2. And we are going to look at naming figures in ways to help us see the corresponding parts. So Activity 2.1 is a math talk, and it asks you to determine, um, well, it gives you that each pair of figures is congruent, and you want to decide whether the congruent statement is true or false. So go ahead and look at these congruence statements and decide if they are true or false based on the picture. And then pause the video and come back to see if your answers were correct. All right, so for this first one, and I'm just going to um, erase these so I can do things a little bit differently here. Um, so for this one, it says that A... B, C. So if we go A, and I'm just going to draw them in order. So A, B, C is congruent to F, E, D. So what we're trying to decide is if these things match up because those corresponding parts, A should end up mapping to F, B should map to E, C should map to D. So we just want to look at the diagram and decide, does that look like it's true or false? And so this um, appears to be true. It looks like each of those parts matches up with the corresponding one. In this second one here, so we see that we go P with L. And that immediately doesn't feel right, right? Because P should have gone with B. So these corresponding parts are not being matched up. So this one is going to be false. And then the next one, we have J with Q. Then we have K with R. And right there we can see K and R, and really J and Q weren't correct either, right? And so, once one isn't matched up, you could stop. So I could have stopped after the first one, but this is false um, because J does not equal Q um, and angle K also does not equal angle R. All right, then this next one has us going um, A to P. And then it goes B to Q then C to R. And really these are regular pentagons. So now that we see that it went in the same order, um, so when we started to go here, we went yellow, green, blue, and this one also went yellow, green, blue, it's gonna be um, okay here as long as we keep with this pattern. So let's just make sure. So D comes after C, and then S comes after that R. So this is a true statement here as well. Multiple um, other options for how you could write this congruent statement, but this one is um, true. All right, then activity 2.2 says which triangles are congruent. So this is in your book on page 178. You can eyeball it if you want to, which I think is gonna be really difficult. Um, I would maybe look at doing some tracing paper or something like that to help you determine which ones of these are um, congruent and which aren't. It's very, very close. Okay, so if you want to take tracing paper and trace this around and move it around to see which triangle is congruent to PQR, that middle one, that would be great. So do that, pause the video and then come back. All right, so if we take this triangle, so I'm just gonna take it, and if I had like tracing paper, I would just be moving it over here, trying to orient it the same way as this one. And so like I see, I, I wanna match up that 46 degree angle, right? Um, but I also want that five on top of there. So I'm going to have to flip this. So I'm going to reflect it, or you could flip your tracing paper over for that reflection um, and then see if we can get it to line up. 
And so then I'm going to get the 46 and the 5.9 to line up. Um, but then it's just a little bit too long here, right? That 4.3 isn't matching up with this one. So that doesn't appear to be the same size. So then you can just move your tracing paper over the next one. I'm just going to grab another one here. And so we can kind of rotate this. I see I'm going to need another reflection too, um, because if I get this 5.9 lined up, right, I'm going to need to reflect over this. So I'm going to flip my tracing paper over and then I can rotate it onto there. And we can see that those two are identical in size. So we want to write a congruent statement here. And remember, you want to line up the corresponding parts, right? So we have triangle PQR. And so I'm going to just write down triangle PQR. And that is congruent to what other one? So you want to name what point land, did P land on? So if I just move this over here, we can see that P landed on M. So M is going to have to come first. Q landed on N. And then R landed on L. So triangle PQR is congruent to MNL. And your explanation would be that you did some rigid motions, right? So you did rigid motions that took it exactly, whoops, took triangle PQR, PQR exactly to MNL. So it lined up exactly where this one, all three vertices didn't line up. So then you can pause the video again um, if you haven't done this yet, but show a sequence of rigid motions that will take PQR to try to the other triangle to and explain each step. And then explain why there couldn't be a rigid motion that took PQR to this one. So pause the video, then come back. All right, so let's write a set of rigid motions here and I'm just gonna duplicate this screen and then I'm gonna delete out some of this so that I've got some space. All right, so I am going to describe the one that's going to take PQR over to this one. And so the first thing that I would want to do is get some points lined up. So I'm going to say that I'm going to translate um, triangle P, I don't know why I keep writing R, PQR by the directed line segment and I want to bring um, P over to M because I know that those are the same because I see that 46.6 degree angle in both. So by segment PM. So then once I've done that, so once I get this triangle over here, then I'm going to be able to rotate, okay? So now I wanna rotate to get another set of points to match. So then we're gonna rotate um, triangle PQR around point M until, and then we can do R goes to L, but I'm actually going to do the one that's sitting out there. I'm going to go Q to N so that this triangle comes all the way around. So until Q coincides with N. And I'm just going to grab this here so I can rotate it. But so we're going to keep P at the same spot. And then we're going to rotate until um, Q lands on N. Then we would just reflect. So now we would do a reflection. So reflect triangle PQR across line um, MN. So that's the line that was set here. Whoops. So across this line MN here. 
So then it would flip over. Um, then the other one said, explain why there can't be a rigid motion from PQR over to the other one. And that's because rigid means same shape, same size. And those two triangles aren't the same size. So this length right here of this segment is too long, right? So AE is shorter than PR, so they're not keeping them the same size. So if the triangles aren't the same size or the figures aren't the same size, then there can't be a rigid motion that takes one to the next. All right, so let's discuss this. So why don't you discuss these two questions, pause the video, discuss discuss these two questions with a partner and then come back to the video. All right, so what we know for sure here is that um, we figured out which two triangles were congruent to each other. So we know that these two are congruent and you said that for various reasons. You could have come up with multiple different explanations for it. But ultimately, when we look here, PR and LM ended up being the same size here. So when we moved this over, all of these kind of pieces were the same. Where in this triangle, AE was shorter than um, this other measured one here. So when we had turned this around, AE really only went to about here. So AE was shorter than the unmeasured one. So there was at least one part of ACE that wasn't the same size as PQR. So we know that those two aren't congruent. That means that we can find rigid motions here. We cannot find rigid motions here since these ones are not the same size. All right, so let's do some more thinking about these corresponding parts. So in this one, it says triangle ABD is a rotation of triangle CDB by 180 degrees around point E. So write down a couple possible mathematical questions that you think could be asked about this picture and then compare it with um, some of your partners or, or some of your classmates. So pause the video, write down a couple questions or just discuss a couple questions that we could ask about this figure and then come back to the video. So lots of different things you could ask here. Maybe you're asking about, could we prove that this is a parallelogram? Is E the midpoint? How do we know? Um, where are the corresponding parts? Is there a set of rigid motions um, that would take ABD to the other one besides a rotation of 180? So there's multiple different things you could ask about that. That's just a couple of them. So let's take a look at this next activity, 2.3. So go ahead and try to answer these questions on page 179. So pause the video. Once you've tried them, come back and we'll discuss them. All right, number one says, is angle ADB, which I've highlighted here, congruent to CBD, where I have the question mark? If so, explain. If not, which angle is it congruent to? And we see this congruent statement here, right? So we know, so this goes ADB. So you could take and rotate this 180 and see that D in this triangle lands on B in this triangle. So that could be your explanation that a 180 degree rotation lands, um, angle ABD on angle CDB, so they are equal. So that's one way. You could also kind of look in this um, congruent statement, and we see that angle D in this top triangle 
matches angle B in this bottom triangle. So we see by these corresponding parts, um, and we know that the triangles are congruent to each other, so the corresponding parts are going to be equal. So that could have been another justification. Number two is segment JK congruent to segment NM. If so, explain. If not, which one is it congruent to? And so you probably see that it's not congruent. So if we did a translation here and then we flipped it over, JK would land here, not on NM, which is that highlighted segment. So they are not, okay? So JK is not congruent to NM. JK is congruent to ON. So you could have done some rigid motions there. You can also look at this congruent statement. We see JK here as the third and fourth letter. ON is the third and fourth letter here. So those two would be congruent to each other just from that statement. All right, lesson synthesis. So we've got quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to JKLM. So here's our facts of this situation. This sets up where the corresponding parts are, what angles go with what, where the points are going to land, all of that. Um, and so this one is saying, why is this congruent statement false? So this is actually not a true statement. Why not? So if we take a look here, you can just start by lining some things up. So A should go with J, which it does not. So A and J are not congruent parts. So that is why this statement is false. So angle A does not go with or is not equal to angle J. And you could have come up with other ones too, right? So if we looked at C, so here's C, that should be going with L. Those don't match. Okay, so any of those parts would um, work out to, that don't line up. So now it wants us to actually write a congruent statement that's true. So let's go and match up some of these parts the way they're supposed to be. So A is here. A should go with L. And I'm just going to put colors on them and then I'll write it in a second. B should go with M. So B should have gone with M. C should go with J. And then D should go with K. So they need to be written in the, in the same order. So if we're going to go A, B, C, D, that is congruent to, so A goes with L, B goes with M, C goes with J, and D goes with K. So just make sure you write them in the correct order, which ones would each one land on. Then you can go ahead and highlight this in your summary, some of the important information from today. So just pause the video, read this over. You can use color if you want to to make it stand out. Then the learning targets for today were that you can identify corresponding parts from a congruent statement. You can use rigid transformations to explain why figures are congruent. And you can write a congruent statement. So you can go ahead and practice this using the lesson two practice problems. This is also your cool down that you can try. And if you have questions about the cool down or need help with that, you can make sure to ask your teacher.